Hi everyone and welcome to my CNC rotor project. In part 1 I will convert this frame into a usable base for my CNC rotor. The design of the rotor is based on the cnczone.nl open source build. For those of you who speak Dutch or like a good challenge I will put a link to the discussion in the description of this video. The frame is 1 by 2 meters and it's just a little bit too big for the rotor I want to put on it. So I will have to cut out a part and weld it back together. I will add in some extra supports for the T-nut table and also a place for the electric cabinet. I started by cutting up the frame and removing all the unnecessary parts. Uh, I also cleaned up everything so that I can weld more easily. Here I'm tacking the frame together and see that everything is as square as possible by measuring the diagonals and making sure that they have the same length. It was a minor adjustment needed so I used this small jack to adjust everything a little bit. I cut the weld and adjusted everything and then welded everything together. I removed the big support in the middle because it was one centimeter below the surface level and I just wanted to put in smaller supports for the Tino table. Here I am cutting up 40 mm square tube to use as support for the T-nut table. They will be spaced about 150 mm apart. I drilled and tapped the holes for the electrical cabinet, which will be fitted in there and screwed in place. Welding the support for the electrical cabinet in place. And I added some extra angle iron for the protection plate in front of the electrical cabinet. I added a 10mm bar to raise the level of this support 
so that the tino tab table can fit on there. The welds in the corner had to be ground down to fit in the electrical cabinet. put the sides to the electrical cabinet I tried uh, bracing this with uh, some, some aluminum brace and it actually takes a lot of heat to heat up this much aluminum so I ended up using the big torch and the small torch together to make it flow the disadvantages however is that uh, it doesn't take uh, that strongly the first time I tried to fit it in the electrical cabinet fell out the sides broke off again after that I decided to get it welded I found someone who could uh, take well this, now it's uh, really strong. These angle irons will hold the extruded aluminum profiles on which the rails for the x-axis will be mounted. They need a lot of holes in both flanges to attach the aluminum profile to the frame. This means it's drilling time.
For the next part of the CNC rotor, it's time to break out the new toys. So I ordered this piece here. It's a glow drill. It's also known as flow drill or there are various brands and other names. And it's a carbide carbide drill. Instead of turning through, will it will melt the metal and uh, make a kind of a pocket hole, which will make it easier to uh, put in some threads. Um, the advantage flow drilling gives is that it gives more meat for thread to take in. To. So this tube is only uh, three millimeters thick. So it's too thin for um, eight millimeter thread. So by flow drilling, we get this extension here, which is another three or four millimeters, making the total close to eight millimeters or seven or eight millimeters, which is good enough for eight millimeter thread. The drilling machine that I'm using for glow drilling is barely strong enough and you can really hear it slow down at the end when there is more friction. Here I'm removing the small collet that is left from the glow drilling.
making all the holes is the last part of the frame and afterwards it went in for a paint job and here I'm retrieving it After a paint or powder coating job like this, the threads are full of paint or powder coat and they need to be retreaded. But first the sand that is used for sandblasting the frame needs to be removed from the threads because there was still a little bit of sand left in the frame and now it's also in the threads. So that needs to be blown out first and after that it can be re-tapped. Otherwise the taps will be tapping sand and that's really bad for their longevity. So here you can see where I'm going with this build. Thanks for sticking around this long and I hope you will join me in part 2 of the open source CNC router build. You can leave comments and suggestions below and thanks for watching.